First of all, I'd like to uh, thank um, my dear friend Narendra uh, for inviting me to this uh, distinguished gathering. It is truly my privilege and honor uh, here today. Um, and, uh, and I have to say that I, I have already learned tremendous, uh, tremendously from all the distinguished speakers and in actions uh, both on and off uh, the, uh, the program. Um, and I, Narendra, I, was, I saw that you were going to put me actually on the hot spot, hot seat, uh, this, what do you call it, because China is the largest now, largest energy consumer worldwide. Uh, but thank you. You remove me from that hot spot and uh, and and uh, allow uh, Mr. Uh, Raymond Vickery to take take that position later on. Well, um, and in the remaining time, uh, Narendra, I will uh, try to pretend to be a, an energy specialist and share with you some of my observations of uh, China's energy, uh, its policy, uh, as well as uh, future trajectory and the impact on uh, the world, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so basically, my presentation, presentation will focus on three areas. Uh, uh, four area. First is energy consumption in China, the landscape, broader landscape. Uh, secondly, is ener China's energy policy, how it evolves over time. And certainly, what are the de determining uh, factors of China's energy policy? And lastly, and how does that impact uh, the world? Uh, so to begin with, I would like to share, I think, let's look at some of the key statistics. And that will give, you us, uh, give us a sense of uh, where does China stand in terms of uh, the energy, uh, uh, global energy uh, landscape. So uh, actually, in the year 2010, China overtook the United States as the largest uh, energy consumer. Uh, and, and now, so far, China still remains uh, the world's largest energy consumer and accounting for 23.2 of uh, global energy consumption and uh, contributing to a city 3.6 of global energy demand growth uh, in 2017. Uh, and also, in 2017, China accounted for 28.5 percent of global energy related uh, 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 carbon uh, emission as well. And also China's oil uh, consumption now has uh, reported uh, 12,798 barrels per day, uh, which accounting for 20 uh, third percent of total uh, world oil consumption. And China also surpassed the United States in annual grow, uh, gross uh, crude oil imports in 2017 and by uh, importing 8.4 million barrels per day. Um, so this is another uh, picture, give us a sense of, uh, well, the China's now overall energy dependent rate is uh, actually quite high, 38.8% uh, uh, last year. Uh, so, w which means China, depending on uh, the, the global market heavily uh, for energy, uh, for energy uh, supply and uh, consumption. Um, and, a, and the statistic also shows that uh, last year, China's total energy consumption is 4.49 billion uh, tons of coal equivalent or TCE. Uh, it's, it is 2.9% uh, uh, of rise compared to uh, the year of uh, 2016. Um, and, uh, and the picture uh, on uh, the right give us a sense of uh, where does China stand in terms of uh, global coal consumption. So it is very clear China still nowadays uh, by far the largest uh, consumer in terms of uh, coal and then followed by United States, India. And this is another uh, data uh, which shows actually the past 10 years, past decade, uh, the distribution of domestic consumption, energy consumption in terms of coal, uh, we can see that there's relatively uh, decline, or actually quite a substantial decline of the coal consumption in the past 10 years. And in terms of oil consumption, relatively stable, and the, the uh, natural gas uh, consumption uh, catches up. And in terms of a clean energy, alternative for renewable energy, it, it rises rapidly. And almost, I think, uh, it's about to uh, catch up with oil consumption. Um, and this is another picture. It's a longer historical uh, perspective. It goes all the way back to the 1960s. So data from 1960 up to uh, 24, uh, 2015. And again, it shows the distribution of domestic consumption. Uh, and it shows 
actually we can see from there is also the consumption of coal and oil I peaked around the year 2000, uh, 2008. Um, so to conclude in uh, this, uh, uh, this data, uh, is that I think by uh, 2050, China's pr primary energy consumption uh, in, in terms of the world percentage will uh, be 23%, uh, and China will also be the biggest uh, uh, consumer for primary energy. And the clean energy will be the main part of China's energy consumption by 2030. And after 2045, uh, China will take up, uh, it will, the clean energy consumption will uh, make up more than 50% of China's total energy consumption. And the coal consumption will actually has peaked around uh, 2008 and will be replaced by clean energy after 2030. And the crude oil uh, consumption will peak around 2030 um, and natural gas demand will rise very fast uh, uh, by uh, 2040s. And the electricity demand will uh, also rise uh, sharply and hit 11.8 uh, trillion uh, kilowatt. But uh, coal uh, power generation uh, percentage uh, will steadily decrease. And now I move to the second part of my presentation, uh, which I will look at the evolution of China's energy policy. And broadly speaking, China's uh, energy policy uh, can be divided into like three uh, periods of time. Uh, the first uh, stage is after uh, the establishment of the People's Republic of China, 1949. And because of the, this, remember this contact of the Cold War and uh, the containment strategy and embargoes imposed by uh, the West, uh, he, he, led by the United States. And therefore, China had to rely on a, a, on pursue a so-called self-reliance uh, strategy uh, aiming at build China's own uh, heavy industry. Um, and the second phase is when China started opening up and reform uh, is in the late 70s and early 80s. Uh, China has been pursuing this uh, so-called multi-dimensional energy strategy, uh, which aims at building up uh, the regulatory policy frameworks uh, and also uh, the uh, the uh, pricing mechanism, as well as basically build up uh, uh, energy market uh, in China. And the third phase is mid 2000, 2000 uh, uh, and, until now. As, as China's energy demand continue uh, rapidly rise, um, and uh, the new strategy really put an emphasis on improving the energy efficiency as well as well as uh, uh, conservation. Um, therefore, energy, energy efficiency really comes first uh, in this latest uh, phase of China's energy policy. And there is a very important document I would like to share uh, a little bit with, uh, with uh, all of you, which is uh, the so-called um, the energy, energy guideline uh, issued by the Chinese government as part of the 13th five-year plan uh, in 2016. And in that document, uh, China, Chinese government announced uh, so-called four revolutions and one cooperation. And the four revolution, meaning the four identify the revolutions in energy consumption, supply, technology, as well as institutional development. And one cooperation means the pursuit of comprehensive cooperation in international arena. And the mission is to build a modern energy system uh, with clean, uh, low carbon, uh, high safety, and high uh, efficiency, characterized by high uh, safety and uh, uh, high efficiency. Um, and also, uh, now China is largest producer uh, of, uh, of carbon, I think, emissions worldwide. Um, and because of that, uh, China's uh, this has been part of China's uh, uh, energy objectives, policy objectives by 2020. So this guideline also lists, outline uh, six, specifically six objectives by 2020. Uh, the first is uh, by 2020, the total energy consumption uh, below uh, 5 billion ton of coal uh, uh, equivalent, uh, TCE. Second, uh, try to 
maintain, uh, improve uh, China's energy self-sufficiency rate over uh, 80 percent, uh, and also steady increase uh, in the primary uh, energy supply. So at least the four billion tons of TCE supply every year. And fourthly, uh, adjusting, adjusting the structure of uh, energy consumption uh, to increase the proportion of non-fossil energy consumption to over 15 percent by 2020. And uh, fifthly, uh, to improve the efficiency of energy system, um, to uh, improve the uh, unit GDP uh, energy consumption uh, to 50 uh, percent lower uh, than that of uh, 20, the year 2015. And lastly, uh, the goal is to, to uh, pursue a unit energy carbon emission uh, decrease to 80 percent lower uh, than that of uh, the year 2015. And this is just another table in a more detailed, specific way to look at energy uh, security structure, uh, efficiency, et cetera, and different uh, indicators uh, for this uh, um, China's uh, energy guideline uh, plan. Uh, so now, the third uh, part of my presentation. So what factors really can explain or determine China's energy policy. I think, broadly speaking, four factors stand out. Uh, first is the energy uh, energy structure. Uh, it really, because energy structure determines China's energy consumption distribution, and especially in the early days uh, of uh, of the People's Republic of China, uh, when China developed its heavy industry, it's really pursued a heavy industry-oriented industry. -oriented industry structure that determines that coal, uh, the fact that coal becomes the main source of energy consumption. Uh, but now as China is transitioning uh, from uh, a, uh, a, a export driven uh, economy to a consumer consumption driven uh, economy, uh, there's bound to be, uh, the, 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 the trend is that more emphasis we put on the clean uh, energy and renewable energy. And second uh, structural factor is a distribution of energy re reserves in China. Uh, nowadays, China has the coal reserve uh, account is over a bit, little bit over one trillion billion, uh, one trillion ton, and uh, there's also 93 uh, billion ton of oil uh, uh, reserves. And natural gas, gas is 38 trillion uh, cubic meters, and this is. Uh, across different provinces, uh, where does uh, coal uh, production, uh, crude oil production, and uh, natural gas production comes from. And the third uh, factor is supply demand uh, condition. Uh, it actually become, becomes more favorable over, uh, over time. And, and we know that as a shale gas revolution, which has uh, great, greatly boosted oil and gas production uh, in the past uh, uh, a few years, and also as uh, the maturing up of the uh, liquefied uh, natural gas uh, production, uh, so the supply demand condition actually becomes more favorable. Uh, that's another very important factor in shaping China's energy policy. And lastly, of course, is a technological development in, uh, especially in the new and clean uh, energy sector. Uh, this is a picture shows about the coal import and ex export. Uh, so it's, uh, it's very, so Australia, I think Indonesia uh, stand out as the largest uh, exporter uh, of coal exporter to China. And in terms of world uh, coal consumption, uh, I think China by far uh, stand out as the largest con consumer of, world, uh, of coal. And natural gas, um, and I think uh, uh, it's uh, Australia, uh, the, the, the liquefied natural gas import uh, is uh, largest uh, supplies uh, from uh, Australia and then followed by uh, Qatar, uh, etc. So this is uh, uh, another uh, picture of China's uh, uh, energy, energy uh, 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 import and uh, uh, export picture. And this is another table shows that uh, in the past uh, decade also, there is a, a 
very steady growth in Asia wide, uh, region wide, the renewable energy production, especially in the past decade. Uh, the picture is very clear. And, uh, and China now has vigorously developed, trying to develop new and rene renewable energy. So uh, in 2017, almost half, half of global renew, uh, renewable energy investment actually came from China, uh, totaling in uh, 125.9 billion US dollars. And this is actually more than double uh, the 53.3 billion uh, that, you, that China invests in renewables in uh, 2013. And China is becoming the largest market in the world for renewable energy. And it is estimated that one in every four uh, gigawatts of global renewable energy uh, will be generated by China uh, by 2040. And uh, uh, in 2017, China consumed uh, 240 billion uh, cubic meters of natural gas, making up of 6.4% uh, of, ch of China's total energy consumption. And to further promote um, the natural gas consumption, China has, actually has pledges to source about 10% of its energy demands uh, from natural gas by 2020. Uh, and China is bound to surpass EU uh, and become the largest natural gas uh, importer very soon. And over uh, the past decade, China has also emerged as a global leader in uh, wind and solar uh, photovoltaic energy or PV uh, energy. China's electricity generated by wind power accounted for uh, now about 2.1% of its total uh, consumption uh, in 2012, uh, not very big compared to 3.7% in the United States and 9.4% uh, in Germany. However, by uh, 2015, China accounted for one third of global wind power capacity. So, in the past few years, uh, I think China's uh, the wind power uh, uh, capacity has grown r rapidly. So, now in last year, uh, it surged to uh, 16,367 uh, uh, megawatts, and uh, which is uh, uh, 10 about 10 percent of uh, uh, growth. Uh, year on year. So in solar PV, China is both a leading supplier and a consumer, and has dramatically, China has dramatically increased its uh, production solar panels, uh, and now China is the largest producer of solar panels, and uh, it also surpassed uh, Germany's solar power generation uh, capacity. And China is also turning to uh, nuclear power to try to decrease its reliance on uh, fossil fuels. So as of July uh, this year, 2018, China operated about uh, 60, uh, 61 nuclear, po nuclear power reactor, which generate uh, 38,419 uh, megawatts of energy. And since last year, China has trailed only France and the United States in terms of nuclear electricity generation. Uh, and China's 13th five-year plan also reaffirmed uh, its commitment to nuclear energy and outline a plan to construct uh, 40 additional plants uh, by uh, 2020. Uh, another very important, I think, aspect to look at uh, China's uh, energy policy as it is going forward is it's now its emphasis on the new energy vehicles or an EV uh, production in China. China has put great efforts in trying to develop an, uh, an EV, an EV uh, and using uh, a variety of set of combination policy instrument market uh, stimulus packages. So an EV is now one of China's designated one of China's seven strategic industries. Uh, and China's NVV sales has actually become uh, number one in the past uh, three years in a row. Um, and uh, 2016 is half million, and last year it's uh, 800,000. And estimated the, the sales will be one million this year, and by 2020 will hit uh, two million. So it's going to be a huge market, and China uh, also now has the biggest NEV market share uh, in, the, in the world. Um, and China, will be become uh, the largest energy producer, consumer, and of course also it aims to try to uh, develop 
uh, catch up in terms of energy uh, technological development as well. So China's energy policy, policy definitely will directly affect uh, the world, uh, you know, the, the global aim of pursuing a low carbon emission energy consumption structure change and as well as old and new uh, energy prices. So I, I will conclude here. So China now is pursuing uh, a higher degree of opening up and more reforms. So the goal is trying to further integrate the China, Chinese economy uh, with the global economy, with more uh, market access for foreign investors, and uh, basically an improve of uh, uh, investment environment, uh, and first improvement of uh, intellectual property protections, etc. And uh, there are a set of uh, a very bold initiative policy initiative have been announced, uh, further opening up of uh, virtually all sectors, including financial sector, manufacturing, and uh, as well as energy sectors. Uh, and in fact, now, uh, in terms of energy industries, uh, some leading uh, international oil and gas retailers now ha has ent have entered into Chinese uh, market already. So to conclude, uh, I think China uh, the picture or the, the vision China wants to pursue is that really want to, to uh, team up with all partners uh, worldwide together try to seize the share opportunity and produce uh, this, a success story that will help uh, not only sustain more robust and greener global uh, economic growth but also deliver a better uh, and a more prospect, uh, prosperous world for everyone and the future generations to come. Uh, with that, I will uh, conclude my presentation. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much.